You are listening to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast. This episode is made possible by our friends at Buddy's Record Service in Union City, Tennessee. Request the best and call Buddy's for all your auto needs. Today's guest is Caroline Minert. This is Scott Williams, host of Real Foot Forward, where every single week we talk about the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. Today, we have a dance-filled episode with Carolyn Minert, Director of Ballet Arts in Jackson. Thank you so much for having me. So, um, you are definitely um, in an area that I don't know a ton about, so this will be a lot of fun. You can educate me and everybody else on ballet, uh, but back us up a little bit and tell us about your childhood. Yeah, um, I actually grew up here in Jackson, Tennessee. Um, I am the youngest of three, and I actually started dancing here in Jackson at Pat Brown School of Dance and grew up with ballet arts um, as I was dancing. When I turned 10, I auditioned. And honestly, I got started because I had an older sister who was really into dancing and I wanted to be just like her. And so that's kind of what kind of got me started. But of course, once I started dancing, um, I had a love and passion for the art form and it's just kind of taken me there. And what, what do you think, tr- what about ballet triggered you um, at that very, very young age? I know there's a lot of parents out there with little uh, uh, boys and girls and they want to get them interested in dance and they're taking them to ballet school. What, what about it triggered you? I think for me, um, personally, I was never one, the best scholar in school, but it seemed like when I went to dance classes, that seemed to make sense to me. You know, the movement just clicked with me and getting to move in ways that I was never taught to do before. And just, I think there's so much dedication and you work so hard at things. And that feeling of when you finally get it is just, it's an amazing feeling. And so I think initially when I first started, of course, I loved the the pink tutus and all the glitter and fun of being on stage. But I think once I got older, I kind of dived a little deeper into, you know, that hard work that I was trying to do and that feeling of just accomplishing something, even if it was something so small. And like I said, it just dance has always clicked for me and it was always such a great outlet. Uh, Now, um, you mentioned uh, uh, the like, was is it the founder of Valley Arts um, who you mentioned her name just a minute ago? Yes, Pat Brown. She started the company back in 1973, and it's been going strong ever since. And it's pretty incredible all the things that she's done. So I'm I'm very humbled to be able to take over the company now and kind of take over her legacy and continue that legacy on in Jackson. Is she still around? She is. She is retired, but I still talk with her a lot, still learning so much to this job and just she's got so much information to provide so yes i still talk with her a lot <laughs> oh that's excellent so so you while you were uh, a kid you were um uh, performing ballet and practicing and, and learning your skill and your craft um did you have to spend a lot of hours dancing oh goodness yes i I was always at the studio right after school at three o'clock, sometimes until nine or 10 o'clock at night, every single day. Um, And then even on the weekends too, I would be there from the mornings on Saturdays all the way until the evening. But it was something that I was truly dedicated about. So it never seemed to bother me. So talking about hours sometimes with dancers, they don't really realize how much work they put in because it's something that they enjoy so much. But yes, it is a lot of work. Now, pardon me for this stupid question, but um, are there like competitions in ballet where you go and you travel around and you compete or is it all performance based? 
So there's like different types of companies and studios. There are competition-based studios. Our company in particular doesn't do competitions. Um, we are just a performance-based uh, company. So basically we are just doing shows and we do our two shows, one in the winter time, which is our nutcracker, and then one in the spring, which is always something different. But there are competitions out there and there are all kinds of ballet competitions like Youth American Grand Prix, which I've done before with some students and it's a, it's a great opportunity as well. But for the most part, what we do is just performance based. So when you were a little kid, did your uh, bedroom have like ballet posters and trophies oh and ribbons and things yeah. like that? <laughs> oh, yes. They would always hand out trophies at um, recital for how many years you'd been in there. So mine has, they always start you off with your first year up to 5, 10, 15 and all that. So yes, my room was decked and still is. My mother still has all that stuff up in my bedroom. And have you, um, did you get to travel like to New York to, to, uh, yes. see uh, LA? Yes. My, I, I owe everything to my parents and my mother in particular. She was great about getting me out there and doing just a lot of different experiences in the world besides Jackson, Tennessee. We would always go to New York and actually I attended the Rocket Summer Intensive in New York City and she would always take me to see a ballet and a musical while we were there. So I've been very lucky with doing experiences like that, but also getting to work with other companies in the summer times like American Ballet Theater, Joffrey Ballet, um, Orlando Ballet, Kirov Academy. So yes, I, I have gotten to experience quite a bit thanks to them. So what, um, how did, tell me a little bit more about the Rockettes camp. Yeah, um, that was, uh, gosh, when I was Seven years old, I remember. I my still to this day, my favorite thing is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And my favorite part was watching the Rockets come out and do their kick line and perform. And so, um, you know, I really was interested in that. And I've always been interested in the jazz dance world. And so um, I would go to New York and we would learn and be there with about I think 40 other kids, you'd have to audition for it. And they have different times throughout the summers that you could go, but they would teach us routines that they performed. We would learn the kick line and then we'd always have a performance at the end. But it was amazing because you would get to be in the theater where they would be. Like I remember standing at Radio City Music Hall nearly breathless each summer because that theater is just amazing. Um, so yeah, it, it's a it's a great experience. I encourage it for anyone who's interested in that. And did you actually? Um, how long was the camp? Did you actually live there in New York while you were doing it as a kid? Um, so the camp was only about a week long, but we would usually try to stay a couple of days after too. And we would work. The hours were long because it was only a week. Um, we would be there from like. 8 a.m. until late at night working on all of our tap and all of our kick lines and all that. And then we would perform at the end of the week. But my mom and I would always try to stay a couple extra days to have some some fun things put in there at the end. <laughs> what um what what is your favorite Broadway play you saw back in those days? Oh my goodness. Um honestly, that's such a hard question for me because I love Broadway and I love musicals. I think Anything Goes has been my favorite. At that in Chicago, just because Chicago has a lot of history about vaudeville. And if you really look into it and dive into some of the pieces, it's historically, it's just really incredible. And so you're, you're a kid, you've obviously been um, inundated with, with uh, performance and ballet and, and dance and your sister as well. Do you have any other siblings? I do. I have an older brother as well. And he's always kind of been the odd man out and with the family of two dancers. <laughs> um, and so you're, you're entering um, your high school years. Did you ever take a break where you thought, you know what, I'm going to put this aside for a while? Or did you just keep plowing straight through? Oh, goodness, no. I knew I wanted to be a dancer and I knew that this was the field that I wanted to be in and that never crossed my mind. I always just wanted to keep going and keep learning. And I think that's still how I am today. That's why I do what I do because anything else, and I've tried having other jobs before. Um, and it's just, 
you know, my life feels like it's missing something because, you know, I just have that love of ballet. And even since I'm teaching and still dancing a little bit, you know, um, I've always known that this was, this was the place for me. And so in high school, um, where did you go to high school? I went to the university school of Jackson. And so it's just probably a small, I'm assuming fairly small high school. Mm -hmm. Um, what, where does one continue, um, after the number of years that you continued to dance, you obviously, uh, surpassed a lot of the local teachers, you know, mm -hmm. how do you, how did your parents continue to challenge you and, and where did you go to continue your skill? Yeah. So, um, I actually went through and I auditioned for the Rockettes and I became a finalist. So a little bit there, I thought I might be moving to New York. Um, but, you know, God had a different plan for me. And I'm so glad because I ended up going to college. I went to the University of Missouri, Kansas City, where I got my degree in ballet, modern and choreographic design. And there I was just put into this place of so much culture with the arts. It was wonderful. And I got to have professional experiences like getting to perform with the Alvin Ailey American Theater Um uh, Williams Henry, Quixotic, so many different companies that I got to have that experience while living in Kansas City, as well as growing my knowledge and building basically the tools that I have now to be able to go back and teach these kids that I'm teaching now. So let's, um, you slid right over the whole Rockettes tryout thing. We got to hear more, <laughs> about, more about that. So, um, so you, you had been through, through the camps and you were a fan. Um, you decided to try out for the Rockettes. Walk us through the process that you go through when you do that. Yeah, so they have about 500 people that audition. And pretty much what happens is they put you in groups. So you show up at the door at Radio City and they'll actually give you like a card or almost like a pager like you would have at a restaurant because they can't have everyone in all at the same time. And so you'll be given a group. So normally people would stand in line and I was never this brave, but some people would get up at like 5, 4 a.m. in the morning to stand in line and be in the first group. And so basically you'd be given a group and told what time to come back at. And so I would come back to my group and basically you would be thrown into a room um, with all these people, probably about a hundred people in the room. And they would give you a combination and some kicks to learn. And you would do a double pirouette at the end. They would see you. It would take about 10 minutes. So you had to learn it very quickly. And then they would make a cut. So they would call all the numbers of people who went through. And so if you made it through, you would go to this other room where you would wait. And then once all the groups would go through, they'd call you back in. And it, that process would continue further and further all the way through callbacks the following day. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a crazy experience. Auditions are not for the faint of heart. But they're definitely worth it, and they, they're great life lessons to um, just kind of keep you humble and also to keep working on what you need to work on. So making it through to the – I was 18. I had just turned 18 when I made it all the way through. There were about 20 people left wow. at the end of the audition. So it was pretty incredible, and it was a wonderful feeling just to make it all the way through. Um, you know, Even though I didn't book the gig, it was just kind of a cool thing for me to – to experience that and also get to, um, I met so many people there too. A lot of connections that I, I still talk with today. And were you, um, were you at the point where you were deciding you were either going to be a rocket or you were going to go to college? Absolutely. Yes. Well, and as, if you a, <laughs> as a dad, as a dad, I'm glad you went to college. <laughs> See, in the dance world, it, it's just, it's definitely a different thing. Um, a lot of people, some people just dive right in and go straight to the dancing professional life and, and other people go to college. But like I said, um, you know, I'm very thankful for the path that I was sent down and getting my degree and going to college because, you know, I met my husband there. And so um, I'm very happy with the things, the way that my life has laid out for me. So you were, um, you were in college. So had you already applied for college before you went to New York to try out for the Rockettes? Yes. And if you ask my parents, they would tell you that I did not want to do that. But um, 
Yeah, I'm glad that they they had me do that. I so your parents and- were encouraging you to go ahead and apply for college, even though you were like, "I'm going to New York. I'm going to be a rocket." <laughs> yeah, well, they were support. They were definitely supportive of me being a rocket too, though. But I think they they were great in making sure I had backup plans. Yeah, that, that's great. Although it's fascinating that you, that you got all the way to the end. Um, you uh, obviously came back uh, to Jackson um, after college. Um, did you always know that you were, is that, was that part of the plan or did that just um, happen? No, it definitely kind of hit me in the head a little bit with that. <laughs> I never thought that I would enjoy teaching dance. I always knew I loved being a dancer and, um, you know, I always thought that that was the path for me, but um, my husband and I got married and he got into grad school in the middle of nowhere um, in East Tennessee. And we moved over there and there was nothing. There was no companies. There was nothing within like an hour. And I found this small studio where I just fell in love with these kids that I was getting to teach for about three years while we were there. And I realized how much, you know, as much as I love dancing, I realized how much more I love teaching. And so, um, you know, with my parents, they, they've always still been here in Jackson and I kind of was wanting to move back closer to them. Um, all my siblings were all spread out very far away and I just kind of had this, um, feeling and I've always had so much love for ballet arts because it it gave me so much when I was there and when I heard that Miss Pat was thinking about retiring you know I had talked with her a little bit and I thought well maybe you know I'll just me- I'll, I'll mention it and so um, you know a couple of months later here I am we've moved back and I'm, I'm very happy and, and blessed to be here. And what does your husband do? He is going to be a veterinarian he's in the last couple of rotational clinical rotations that he's in right now. Well, this is a good area um, to be a veterinarian. <laughs> yeah. Um, what What do you think, you know, we here uh, at Discovery Park are living in a very rural community. I know that Jackson is a little bit um, um, more metropolitan um, than we are here, but it's definitely not Atlanta or uh, <laughs> New York. What, what, what do you think um, the arts can bring and to a uh, community like Jackson or Union City? Oh, goodness. Um, I think the arts are so important to have. You know, as I mentioned, I was living in a very, very rural area before I came back to Jackson. And they had the one dance studio and just being around those kids and then coming to Jackson, which, you know, our population is a little bigger. It's very different because the people in the rural rural areas just sometimes maybe don't know what arts can do. And I think that, you know, in Jackson, Valley Arts has been around since 1973. And so we are very lucky that people do know who we are. There's some still some people that don't know exactly who we are, what we do, but we're very blessed that people know who we are and what we try to present to our community. And, um, you know, I don't know. I, I think that the arts, like I mentioned earlier, for me, they were always an outlet for kids. I think they're wonderful. It's just a different way of learning. So walk me through, um, let's just say I've got a six-year-old um, who I want to see if she's, he or she is interested in, um, ballet, uh, walk me through a little bit of what I would expect my child to experience. Yeah. So first thing I would tell you to do is to sign her up for a class (laughs) where, um, she would be put into a classroom. And the first thing that they do is they teach, all the kids, the language. So actually all of the ballet terms are in French because it originated in France. So the first thing you would learn are um, the five positions um, where they have their feet in certain positions as well as their arms. So, um, and that right there, I mean, kids aren't even realizing that they're learning another language when they take ballet, just due to the fact that that's, that's what we use. And that's kind of a cool thing too. If she were ever to go somewhere around the world and take a ballet class anywhere, she would still be able to understand what they're asking her to do. Um, 
But basically, she would just be thrown into kind of learning the basics of what ballet is. Um, normally, most studios have a recital. If she wanted to do Nutcracker, you could always sign her up for that. Um, and if she what is that? What is that? Um, what is that stance where one foot goes one way and the other foot goes the other way? <laughs> I think you're talking about fifth position. Yeah, I can actually do that. Surprisingly. Okay. Can you? Wow. Yeah, my leg, something about the way my, my bones are built, I can do that. So if you ever need, wow. if you ever need someone just to stand on stage in that position, let me know. I can, I can help I you out. I will give you a call. <laughs> so that, so you would, uh, at very little, you know, my, my daughters were in the Nutcracker when they were very little. Um, how, what do you look for when you're looking for a kid who might be somebody who might eventually continue to pursue uh, ballet as a career? I think having a great worth ethic, work ethic is a great thing for dancers to have because we are constantly learning and growing um, as performers. Um, musicality is a huge thing, coordination, um, and just a great attitude all around because the dance field is not an easy one to hop into. So you need to have you need to be a little tough to be able to keep pressing on um, because we are such a, uh, a small dance field and it is hard to book jobs. It is hard. And, you know, even if you get the job, it's not really something that um, you do it because you love it. It's not something that you would do for necessarily um, the pay. My, my perception is, and you can tell me whether this is right or not, is that ballet has is much more um, athletic than people might assume. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> what kind of physical, what kind of physical um, uh, challenges do people in ballet um, have to deal with? Um, so a big thing is a lot of dancers, we work with the way that our human anatomy is built. Not many people know this, but dancers are required at their hips to rotate externally, which really were made to have that in more internal rotation. So that right there is a, is a struggle in itself because we're actually wanting our bones and our body to move in the opposite direction that we're wanting it to move in. Our leg muscles have to be very strong for jumping, um, going on our toes when you're in point shoes. Uh, you have to have incredibly strong ankles, your arms, you have to have a great uh, core there as well. I mean, dance is very athletic and it, it is tough because it requires so much strength throughout your entire body to be able to do what we're asking it to do. Now, I mean, it, I don't know if it's true or not, but um, I have heard in the past that a lot of times football players are sent to work with um, folks in ballet because uh, it does. I think Herschel Walker was maybe one who who talked about how it really does um, help overall athleticism. Is that do you, yes. have you have you worked with any football players? <laughs> My brother, maybe, but he probably <laughs> wouldn't want me telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, ha I haven't worked with any football players, but I have heard that before, especially with their footwork, whenever they're wanting to move quickly and being able to have that coordination. Um, I have read a lot of articles and my dad and my brother are huge sports fans and they're always telling me about how I need to go to a football team and to see if they need any help. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and then I, I don't know if it's just in the movies or not, but in the movies, like they always have the, you know, the ballet stars unravel their uh, things on their feet and their feet are just torn up and bloody and bruised. <laughs> is that, does that happen to you? Oh gosh, yes. My feet are forever ruined, but you know what? It was for a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously in the last, um, six months, um, how long have you been, how long have you been, um, there at ballet arts? So I signed my contract for ballet arts July 1st. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yes. so you've been dealing <laughs> with the pandemic, um, yes. like the rest of us, but in a new position, how has, obviously you guys haven't been doing a lot of live performances. Um, what are some other ways it's impacted your, your, uh, job? Yes. We've had to be very creative because right now, I mean, just in particular, I have 
so many friends that are professional dancers that don't have jobs right now because we're not able to perform live due to this pandemic. And of course, it's to keep people healthy, but it's really sad that our arts community is suffering right now. And so to me, it was very important to make sure that these kids were still able to do what they love and they weren't missing out. So we've been doing precautions like at auditions. We did it 10 at a time, they had to wear face masks. We were sanitizing our bars. They had to have a temperature check when they walked in. Um, Things like that, keeping, making sure that they're six feet apart. And since we started rehearsals for our Nutcracker, um, we've continued doing those exact things. Our girls are having to wear face masks all the time. They're six feet apart. We're wiping down surfaces. They have to take a temperature check. And And it sounds like a lot, but I'm willing to do all of those precautions to make sure that our company is is healthy, our audience member members are healthy, and our kids are getting to do what they love. Now, um, that probably all the stress probably uh, means that you need to take some time to relax and meditate. I understand you're also a yoga teacher. Is that right? I am. Yes. So I. Um, Keep meaning to learn how to do yoga and meditate. I think that would be a good stress reliever. Uh, t- tell me a little bit about um, uh, yoga and you know what 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 you find appealing about that. Yes, so I started doing yoga when I was about fifteen. Actually, whenever I was having some injury problems with, when I was dancing, and so um, yoga was a great place for me to go because I was learning how to continue my strength and movement, but also taking care of my injury at the same time. Fast forward to when I was living in East Tennessee and I was starting to teach dance. I always knew I wanted to, um, you know, kind of get a little bit more involved with the yoga world. So I would drive to Knoxville where I got my 200 hour training there. And, um, you know, yoga to me, you you said it best, it is a wonderful stress relief. Um, And getting to teach that also and helping others find a way to, you know, whatever they're doing throughout their day, especially with this pandemic, my goodness, um, people need to come in and just sit down and breathe for a moment and kind of remove themselves from the stress of their work and, you know, what's going on in our outside world. So I definitely still like to practice yoga when I can and um, remind myself to breathe. And I still use all of those techniques that I've um, been trained to do throughout my day. Very nice. So if somebody out there um, who's listening to us wants to check out Ballet Arts in Jackson, where where should they go? They can go to balletartsjackson.org. Fantastic. You have been so fascinating to chat with, and I feel I feel like I know so much more about ballet now than I did when we started. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm, uh, if, if uh, maybe, maybe someday I'll have a granddaughter and I'll, or a grandson, and I'll bring them to Ballet Arts in Jackson. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Start planning your visit to Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. And also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.